Okay, some simple demonstrations to do with center of gravity. Uh, we know the center of gravity of an object is a place where all its weight appears to act. So you can do some pretty impressive little demonstrations with that. If the center of gravity is over the base, an object will be stable. So for instance, the center of gravity of this book is in around there somewhere, and it's definitely over the base, so the object is stable. If I put the object standing up, the center of gravity of the object is still in the middle. As it currently stands, it's just about over the base. Even if I open it up a little bit, it will be stable. If I tilt it ever so slightly like this, the center of the gravity is still around there someplace. If I tilt it just a tiny amount so that it's still over the base, it will come back and it will fall back in that direction and be stable. If I tilt it to such an extent that it's no longer over the base, the base is this bit down here, then it will fall over. Okay, so let's look at some simple demonstrations. If you have a normal can, let's just get one without any water in it. Normal can, that's the base of the can, okay? If, however, I put it like this, my base is here where the lip is. See the lip on the can there, right? The center of gravity of the object is, in this case, approximately in the center of the can. You can't see it, but it's in there somewhere. So it's here somewhere, right? If I tilt my can like that, the center of gravity is no longer over the base, so therefore if I release it, it falls over. If, however, I put water in it, and I put the water up to about this level, now when I tilt it like that, half of the water is going to be, if I look at a direct line, if I do it like this, if I look at a direct line going straight down the middle, half of the water will be on that side, half of the water will be on this side, so the center of gravity will be much lower, and it will also be pretty close to halfway between the two sides. So the center of gravity in this case should now be approximately over the lip. So if I get one where I pour water into it and balance it like this, and there's this equal amount of water on both sides, the center of gravity should be over the lip, and therefore that's its base, and therefore it should be stable. And in fact, it should be a so stable that even if you tilt it slightly, it should still fall back. But if you tilt it too much, it's obviously going to fall over. So the single greatest concept from this topic, and it's not highlighted in the notes, which is why I'm making a big deal of it now, is that an object will be stable if its center of gravity is over its base. Okay? And that concept isn't even in the textbook. The concept on center of gravity is one, your definition of center of gravity. It's a place where all the weight seems to act. The second thing you've got to know is how to calculate center of gravity during the experiment by hanging a weight underneath it and drawing a line, and rotating and repeating, and where they intersect with your center of gravity. And the third thing is you've got to know how to make an object more stable. But they don't emphasize the whole concept of what, when is an object stable. An object is stable when its center of gravity is over its base. So we look at a couple of quick variations on that. Each of these seem quite counterintuitive. Like this guy here, you would think it should fall over here. Where is the base for this object? Down there. Yeah, right down there. So once you rearrange it so that the center of gravity for this whole system is somewhere over there, then the object will be stable. So for instance, if I move this back here, if I move my bottle here, the center of gravity is now over this point. It's no longer stable, so it'll fall over. Here you've got quite a wide base. It looks strange, but here you've got quite a wide base down here at the bottom. So once the center of gravity of the whole system is over the base, it will be stable. And then this one is the most counterintuitive, partly because it's a bit of an illusion. You think that that's a uh, flimsy chain, but actually it's a solid object. But again, this is my base around here. Once the center of gravity is over the base, it will be stable. Two variations of that, and then we're done. The first one is this guy here, which you often see in uh, toy shops. Why does this always work? No matter what you do with him, he always ends up standing up. The base is wide. He wants two things. He's got a wide base around here, okay? And also the center of gravity is low. very low. So even if I tilt him like that, his center of gravity is still going to be over the base. So even like that, his center of gravity is still over the base. So back up where he goes. And that became a leaving cert question last year or the year beforehand. Try and explain why it's very difficult to knock this guy over. It's because no matter what you do, his center of gravity is always over his base. So he remains right up. Finally, let's look at what I think is the most important application of all of that, and the one that you never see being talked about. And this is where I make a little bit of an idiot out of myself, but that's OK. I've done it before. 
am stable. Once what? Once you center gravity. Center gravity. Center gravity. Where's my center of gravity? Stomach. Around your waist. Around my waist. So somewhere there in the middle of that coat is my center of gravity. I remain stable while that center of gravity stays. My base here is the area between my two feet. Okay? If I do this, all of a sudden my base has changed. My center of gravity is still the same place. As of right now, it's over my base, so I'm stable. But if I tilt myself forward, once I go beyond a certain angle, that gut is no longer over that right step, and therefore I tilt over. What's the big deal here? Well, the big deal here is that it's actually quite difficult to keep your center of gravity over your base. You can see this, if you don't believe me, by looking at a little child. It takes a baby months and months and maybe even a year or two before they get the hang of putting, keeping their center of gravity over the base. So what they tend to do, they try and walk. We think walking is a very natural phenomenon, but very few animals, particularly if they're on two legs, walk. What I say, very few animals can walk easily. It takes a lot of learning. The other evidence you have to show how difficult it is, not only do babies find it difficult, but if you even have a couple of pints of beer, or bread, or whatever it is, honey, or whatever, what do you drink? Oak. Monster. Oh. Never heard of mine. Thank you. <laughs> if you just have a couple of drinks, one of the first things that goes, in fact, you can often, you can often talk reasonably well. The two things that go, one is your ability to talk. You can hear fine, but your ability to talk goes. But the other thing that goes is your ability to keep that base, your center of gravity, over the base. And here's what happens. You end up doing something like this, and you do it like that. And you, you manage to stay standing if you put your foot down properly, but if you don't, over you go. So if a person is walking normally, this is just obviously this is what you're normally doing, but in reality, what you're actually doing is you're moving one step, you're moving one foot, as soon as that foot rises up and you go over slightly, you're no longer stable. So now what you've got to do is put that foot down in a position that enables you to be stable like this. My center of gravity is over my base and I push off again, and I'm unstable, and this is what happens to a baby. They don't know where to put the foot down. And by trial and error, they eventually realize it's somewhere like that. And once I do it properly, my center of gravity is over the base. So really, walking is just a way of getting from A to B without falling over. How do you avoid falling over? You make sure when you sit down, or when you put the foot down, that your center of gravity stays over the base. And I said, it's not an easy technique to learn. So when people build robots, they can make a robot stand and they can make it move its arms. One, of, excuse me, one thing that's very difficult for a robot to do is walk. So usually what they do with robots is they put them on wheels and they just oscillate, they just go over and back on a little motor that drives a wheel. The last couple of, only in the last 10 years have they managed to build robots that actually look quite realistic. I give them two feet and or enable them to do something like this and put the foot down in the right place. And similarly, with babies, they've got to learn where to put it down and similarly if you're drunk, the first skill that goes, or one of the first skills that goes, is trying to remember where do you put down that foot <laughs> in order to be in what's known as stable equilibrium. Okay? If you look up on YouTube, the one the famous robot that does this called Asimov, A-S-I-M-O-V. He's uh, built in Japan and he's famous because of the fact that they can now get him to climb stairs, so he's beginning to look realistic. But this is 2012. Only in the last couple of years have they been able to get robots that have been able to walk properly. It is a very difficult thing to do. It is a very unnatural thing to do. It's all got to do with center of gravity and keeping that center of gravity over the base. If you do so, you are stable in stable equilibrium. If you're not, you do to fall over. And we did say, that finally, the two ways of making your an object more stable are what? What are the two things you can do? Lower your center of gravity and wide space. Okay, so that's what you do when you're designing motor cars, when you're designing cars of any description, you've got to keep an eye on those two factors. That's all I wanted to say there. Thank you, Brida.